I am excited to be joined by a special guest. This is a man from Auburn, Nebraska. All right, he's also coaching high school football out there, dominating teams modern day. But this is he played for Nebraska back when defensive ends were known as Russians, 1998 to 2002, a multi-time All-Big 12 performer, first team All-Big 12 in 2001, second team All-America that same year, a team captain of four time first team all big 12 academic performer in a 10-year nfl vet all with the buffalo bills mr chris kelsey how you doing my friend chris can you hear me i can all right how you doing my friend good how are you adam i'm good and i appreciate you joining me so uh, as i as i tend to do with all my interviews i want to go backwards before i go forward into present and modern day. Now, you were a freshman. Your years were 1998 to 2002. So in 1998, that was Solich's first season. It was right after 25 years of the Osborne era, three national titles in four years, all that good stuff. I'm curious, what was it like in 1998 during that transitional period from Coach Osborne to Coach Solich, you being a true freshman in that locker room? What was that particular year like during that transitional period as we changed head coaches? You know, my, my viewpoint um, might be a little different than, you know, the rest of my recruiting class. Um, I was Coach Osborne's last recruiting class. I committed to Nebraska after my junior year in high school, um, and he was still the head coach. So he retired during my senior year of high school. Um, but I left right after, uh, right after my senior year got over. I left Auburn, where I grew up, and, and moved in with my brother in Lincoln. So I, I was working out with the team and, and familiarizing myself with the program um, uh, several months before the rest of my recruiting class got up there. And, you know, um, expectations were high, you know, like you'd said, coming off uh, three national championships in four years. Um, that was the mentality. Um, you know, so um, you know, kind of like nothing, nothing new, nothing's changed. Um, Solch was a Osborne guy and, and we didn't figure there was going to be a, a whole lot of, difference other than losing arguably the best uh, college football coach um, you know in the history of the NCAA um, granted we knew that he'd still be around and still have an influence on the team um, so I, as far as expectations I mean you, you know how it was as a freshman you're just putting your nose to the grind head down working hard trying to uh, you know make a good impression and, and doing all the things the right way so um, I guess I just really didn't know anything different um, and thought it was just, you know, status quo and, and just moving forward, trying to win another national championship. Now talk to me about 1999, because there's certain teams that get brought up by Husker fans, you know, the teams that didn't quite win the title, but maybe were good enough to do so. You think about 82, 83, 93, and 99 gets brought up a lot. Uh, you guys ended up number three in the country, just stomped a mud hole in Tennessee in the Fiesta Bowl. Florida State was number one that year. All right, in your opinion... All right, obviously Florida State was pretty good. Nebraska was pretty good. Had Nebraska had the opportunity to play Florida State that year, what do you think would have happened? You know, obviously I'm going to say I think we would have won. We were really yeah. playing football <laughs> at the same time. And, um, you know, um, you, you're right. That 99 team just mentioned a lot. And as, uh, as you know, defensive guys, um, you know, we had a really, really good defense that year. Um, and, you know, you mentioned the Fiesta Bowl. And I just uh, brought up, you know, the fact that Coach Osborne retired, you know, my senior year in high school. And then after the Fiesta Bowl, Coach McBride announces his retirement. So arguably two of the greatest uh, coaches um, at their respective uh, uh, positions um, to coach in the, in, in the college football um, ranks um, lost. I lost, you know, within a three-year period. So, um, but yeah, no, I mean, 99 is as good a team as, as I have ever played on. Um, and uh, obviously, I think that we can play with anybody in the, in the country that year. Now, I don't think I've ever told you this, and I'm sure you, maybe you remember. You were you were a senior when I was a true freshman, and dude, I'm just going to be honest. You 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 intimidated me, and you scared the crap out of me. Uh, just being a true freshman, I, I was a very quiet guy back then. I know that's hard to believe, but you were jacked, very intense, worked your butt off, and just so everyone knows, Chris is one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet. But I remember there was three defensive ends that year. It was you, Justin Smith, and Des Moines Adams. And I remember one time, like, you and Justin Smith had a bit of a disagreement during a drill or whatever during the summer. 
I just remember like I was standing there watching you guys kind of, you know, have more than a friendly chat. And I, I about crapped my pants, to be honest with you. I was like, these guys could kill me. Um, but anyways, my question is this, because everybody, by that point, you were now an upperclassman. You were a leader on the team. You were, as I mentioned, when I brought you on, you're one of the three team captains. So my question for you is, what was your leadership style and approach when you got to that position as an upperclassman? Lead by example. Um, and that's just kind of always how I've done it. Um, and, and those are the leaders. And, and I don't want to speak for you, but, you know, seeing your career and seeing, you know, what, what you've accomplished, I would assume that, that you took a similar approach. Um, you respect a leader a lot more when, when they're out there um, doing the things that they're preaching. And I know whether it's in high school, college, um, in the NFL, I was a captain um, in all three levels. Um, I just, I, I approached it the way that I wanted to be led. Um, I'm not going to tell somebody to do something that, that I'm not willing to do myself. And, and I think that goes a long ways. And you can't really jump into somebody's ass when you're not willing to do it yourself. And, and you bring up the deal with Justin Smith, though I don't remember that particular instance, but um, there's been several through the years. And I think that's where I garnered some of the respect I got because um, that very that very point, I'm not going to tell somebody or ask somebody to do something that I'm not willing to do. Uh, first. So um, I grew up, you know, really since my sophomore year in high school, you know, I was a freshman in high school and my brother was a senior. And so I was around the football program up up in Lincoln for, for years. Um, there was nine years straight that my brother, I was in the program um, playing, you know, Chad didn't red shirt. Um, I did. So uh, that's where you get those nine years, but I was up there a lot. And I just saw how, you know, being around the program, especially during the summer times, it was player driven. You know, coaches may have made an appearance now and again, but everything was led by the leaders of the team. And, and so that's, that's how I approach it too. And it was my turn to uh, step into that role. Um, I wanted to do my job. I wanted to hold everybody accountable, but hold myself accountable first and foremost. And um, that's the one thing that really jumped out at me watching the program from the sidelines when my brother was up there was just how it was, it, it, it was more than just football. It was a brotherhood and it was about, uh, winning at all costs and holding each other accountable. And, uh, you know, that's just, I, kind of, I took that approach with me throughout my career. All right, let's talk a little bit of modern Husker football. Tony White's defense, the three three five defense, has played very well this year. In fact, the Huskers haven't given up 20 points or more in their past five games. What has stood out to you about the Black Shirts defense this year and why they've been able to adjust to a new scheme, a new coach, and and for the majority of the season, play really well. Why, why have they been able to do that, in your opinion, so far this year? Man, I wish I had an answer. Um, I'm surprised, to be honest with you. Like, I was able to meet Tony um, prior to the season beginning, and, and I did my research on him, you know, just reading up, like I'm sure all Husker fans uh, did. You know, what he did is Syracuse, and the type of defense he runs is, is kind of unorthodox and not what you see every day, but – to see what he's done with the personnel he has is really surprising. It's amazing. Those guys have played their rears off all year long. And uh, to see the success that they're having on that side of the ball is uh, I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised. And, and in my personal opinion, I don't, I don't even think he's scratched the surface of what they're capable of in that defense. Once, once they get, um, you know, more familiar with it and, and add a few more pieces to the puzzle personnel wise, um, man, I, I think this is going to be a real potent defense for a long time. And, and to see what he's done in such a short amount of time is, uh, is really remarkable. All right. So I'm going to, I'm going to touch a little taboo subject with Husker fans because Tony White's name starting to come up with other potential coaching jobs out there. All right. We got to do everything we can to bring him back in my opinion, but how important is it to you to do everything we can to try to bring Tony back or keep, and make sure Tony stays back with Nebraska going forward in the future. We have to do everything we can. I mean, I think, you know, Trev and obviously rule, he's a rule guy. Um, you know, he obviously hired him to, uh, to come run our defense, but um, we can't lose a guy like that, especially after year one. Like I said, there's uh, the sky's the limits for this defense and, and his leadership and, and the way that he's uh, responded and the kids have responded to him. Um, it would, it would be a huge hit to our program, in my opinion, if we were to lose them. Talk to me about the defensive line, because that was the biggest question mark coming into the season. Only one guy had any real legit experience. That was Ty Robinson. 
We didn't have a whole lot of depth that we knew of. Now Ty Robinson has played great. The polar bear, Nash Hutmaker, is playing great. You got freshmen like Cam Lenhart that are stepping up. And th- you could argue this is maybe the strongest group on the defense, but absolutely one of the strongest position groups on the team. What has stood out to you about why the defensive line has been so effective so far this year? I think they're really disciplined. Um, I think the plays that they're supposed to make, they make. Um, we are a great tackling team, um, which I, I haven't been able to say that for <laughs> years. Yep. Uh, yeah, which is it's, it's sorry in, in, in and of itself, but um, I, I think they play with their hair on fire. You know that they have a lot of confidence in themselves. They have a lot of confidence in the guys behind them, and you know how far that can go. If the guys uh, behind you are doing their job, and the guys behind you know that you're going to do your job, it's it's it, it meshes well together. You know, it, it all has to work together. Um, it's just not one position group um, playing well and the other two can slide or, or what have you. Um, I just think that they're putting them in great positions to use their abilities. And then when there's plays there that they, they should make, they're making them. And then just hustling their butts off. You know, you, you preach it all the time about running to the football, playing through the whistle or just a, sh- a tad after the whistle. And, and, and that's what you're seeing from those guys up front. And they got a pretty good rotation going, keeping guys fresh. But um, the guys that have, that have had to make plays in the, in, in the critical moments have come up and made some good plays. All right, my man, last question I got for you. It's a two-parter. What's your biggest key to the game for Nebraska beating Wisconsin this Saturday? And then do you have a score prediction? I don't have a score prediction. I do think it's going to be a close game, um, you know, especially in, in Madison. Wisconsin, um, you know, has struggled at times this year too, but they'll always play us tough up there. Um, so I don't really have a score prediction, but I have two words. I mean, it comes down to turnovers, right? That's been yep. our, the thorn in our side. That's been the thorn in our side all year long. And, and uh, I'm not a should have, could have, would have guy. But if you look at our schedule and you take away our turnovers, we're sitting at one, maybe two losses this year. Um, obviously, Michigan is a, is a great team, one of the top in the country. Um, you don't win that game, I don't believe. But And then you can, you can talk about Colorado, but um, – Look at the scores, look at our turnover margin, and uh, we're a completely different team if, if we can uh, take care of the football. So um, difference in this game, I think, will be like the difference in every game uh, for the most part outside of those two I mentioned, turnovers. And uh, um, we're going to play good defense. I know we're going to play good defense. We just have to uh, be able to move the ball offensively and take care of the ball. I completely agree with you, my friend. I think you nailed it. I appreciate you taking the time to join me.